Hey guys, this is Leduc for the Score Esports, still subbing in for Dexter. And with me, I have the most valuable coach of the summer 2016 split. And this guy just confirmed his position by beating up H2K. How does it feel to be in the finals for the first time? How does it feel to finally reach that milestone? For me personally, it's amazing. Like, I've been in the league scene for so long, but this game was like this best of five was as far as I've ever gotten. And now the finals, it feels incredible. And, you know, I'm just looking at the journey, journey we've made as a whole, as a team. And, you know, I want to shed a tear every time. And, you know, I'm so proud of the boys. And I really feel like they deserve all of this because I think the, the hard work they put in uh, throughout these two splits is just, uh, you know, there has to be some payback for it. And it's finally coming. Okay, um, uh, Jan Kors mentioned in an interview on Tuesday how he respects you a lot for the both the preparation you do in-game and mentally for the players. How does it feel for you as a coach to face up your former players and potentially snatching away their dream of making it to the World Championship? Well, it definitely is bittersweet. I feel like the series could have ended either way. You know, it was so close. Nars dodging a karma queue, that was pretty much what decided the series. And I think uh, it was very, very bittersweet because I still have a lot of love for Jankos and Vander. But, you know, I do feel like um, knowing them as people is definitely an advantage coming into this. You know, they know me, but it's very, very different to know a, a coach because, you know, it's I do my things based off of the players I have, so they need to know the players. I think it goes way more in depth than that. And Jankos and Vander, I know how they are as people and, you know, our general strategy strategy was to just follow Janko's patterns throughout the early games and we knew we would have like a rough 1-2 game but then eventually we would see Janko's pattern and I feel like by the end of it, mm -hmm. it definitely showed that Trashy was inside of Janko's head. Yeah, he, he mentioned definitely that he figured out Janko's towards the end of the set. Uh, one question I want to ask you is that in a previous interview you mentioned that you expected Fnatic to win. Then we had the delays on Sunday, which only gave you three days to prepare for maybe an unexpected opponent. Would you say that like that gave you trouble? Would, like was there some some sort of hurdle for you guys to overcome to face an opponent and only having three days? I, I feel like definitely you know we um, our position of getting out of seeded to semi-finals was uh, suddenly uh, like uh, less important because I, I think it's, you know, a lot of people are saying, oh, H2K, they have less time to prepare too. But to be honest, what content do they have to prepare on? We have three games to work on and uh, there is a lot of more things that you have to add to the mix. And definitely, you know, you basically get two, two scrim days less of practicing specific bands against a specific team. And I think it definitely hurt us. And uh, I am kind of pissed off that the situation happened, but you know, it happened, you know, what can we do? Okay, so the next one is gonna be a little bit of a tricky question because last spring split, you guys were in relegations. You had a close set against Giants and you can argue you guys were at somewhat of a threat of getting relegated. Now, in an interview, you were talking about how you like to play the long con. You know, like you, you think long term, you want to build up the players, you want to build up the team. How would you say how risky is this kind of approach in an unstable environment like the LCS? And maybe you can elaborate how a franchise could help uh, to establish new players. I feel like, you know, in, in this case, just because I joined Splice, I felt like this was the correct approach. You know, so looking at the organization, very new, it's hard to recruit like big names. So you have to just do the best with what you have. And at that time, you know, I had five players coming in and I didn't really have a chance to make any changes. I just had to do the best I could with these players. And with that in mind, you know, I knew for a fact that the first split wouldn't be the most success, success, successful one. And we had to just look at the long con. I think coaching in general has to be, you know, kind of um, uh, tailored specifically for what you have. I think based off of the resources you have, based off of the players you have, you need to kind of make a plan for yourself of what you want to accomplish. And you also always have to be reasonable. In this case, I definitely feel like uh, the long con was the correct approach. If I had like some different players, some big names in the start, then definitely I would take a different approach. But I felt like this one was correct for this time. And regarding the franchise? Well, franchising, I think, you know, it is in terms of player development, I think uh, you could argue that it helps out uh, developing new players because you're willing to take these risks that you spoke of. But I do feel like in the end, it's going to be the same. I think 
the bad players are going to be replaced by good players and I think in the end every organization will want to look for those wins. And while I do believe like uh, talent can be grown and you know from solo queue I think uh, there is always a risk with any player unless you have like these big names. Mm -hmm. You know franchising in general you know at, Personally, from a competitive aspect, I don't, don't think it's the correct approach for league okay. because I think it will, in the end, you know, it creates some kind of competition. You know, you're forced to do very, very well uh, these risks. You know, even if like if you take a risk and it doesn't pay off, I think you should be punished. And if you're not punished, then I think teams might start to slack off. And I think it's hard to know which 10 organizations are the best, which 10 owners are the best. So I think it's good that you get new owners coming in with new ideas every single split if they do manage to qualify. So personally, I'm against franchising just because I'm a football fan, you know, European football. OK, nice answer. Um, so one thing I want to touch upon is that you guys were somewhat of the rookies of the playoffs, like the rookies of this playoffs. You uh, your entire BO5 experience ended up only being the set against Giants. Now, playoffs can add a lot of extra pressure. Actually, I think Giants is a pretty good example of players not being able to cope with this added pressure. Can you maybe elaborate for the viewers about how you approach preparing your players and the team to deal with this kind of extra pressure from playoffs? Well, from our perspective, you know, I've um, tried to push my philosophy on top of the players uh, all the time that their job is to focus on what is in front of them and what is currently happening. And in that case, you know, it's about taking game by game. From my perspective as a coach, it's important to think about the past and the future. I just want my players to think about what's going on in front of them. And regardless of, uh, you know, what situation they are in, I tell them to do this in practice. I tell them to do this in the best of tools they play. So in general, you know, everything that we've done has prepared us for a playoff setting because I do believe the right approach for the players is to take everything step by step. What happened in the past and the future doesn't matter. Sure, you can take some ideas uh, and build something off of that, but that is my job. And I feel like from my perspective, I have enough experience in best of five scenarios, so I feel like I am ready to uh, adapt in these situations. Yeah, um, Trashy also made a nice statement about how he feels that the difference is mainly that Splice doesn't tilt. You know, you guys are a unit, you guys are stable, and that was probably, I would say, the, the whole work of the preparation, it paid off. Now, um, there was a PTL episode, and the coach of TSM, Parth, he was mentioning about how he credited a lot of the success of TSM and Immortals to their sports psychologist, uh, Weldon for TSM and Robert Yip for Immortals. Now, my question for you would be, uh, did you guys work with a sports psychologist before? And since you guys are very likely to qualify for roles, uh, is this something you want to uh, start taking into consideration as preparation for, for the World Championship? Well, from our point of view, we did work with Weldon for some time. Uh, we didn't have uh, like as much time as TSM have with him, but we did uh, have some time with him. And I personally felt like I picked up a lot of things. Mm -hmm. From my perspective, I do believe that uh, uh, like sports psychology, the best person it comes from should be the coach. So personally, I've tried to look into it as much as possible, read into it as much as possible. And something that I'm looking to do for the next split is to also uh, basically go to class and learn as much as possible about it. Because I do believe mm -hmm. sports psychology is a very important aspect of coaching and not just making strategies. So from my perspective, it is very, very hard nowadays to uh, fight or find uh, the right, correct staff because, you know, the scene is very, very young in terms of building structure. So I think, from my perspective, this is the safe bet to get some lessons for myself and then apply that knowledge that, that way. But I do believe, you know, sports, sports psychology is like 50% of it and the rest of it is strategy. I, I do believe sports, sports psychology is very important. I have a feeling there are some people out there who are going to like to hear that. <laughs> uh, mainly sports psychologists. <laughs> Okay, um, we're almost done here. Uh, one more question I have for you is, now you're going to be facing Unicorns or G2 in the finals, and there's only a handful of teams left in playoffs. So scrimming, like practicing against other teams can be kind of tricky because you don't get a lot of scrim partners, like, and usually the opponents know a lot about what you're doing. So maybe can you tell us a little bit about how difficult it is as a coach to prepare for the playoffs? And how do you intend to set up the next week for the finals? Well, from our perspective, you know, like um, the way everything is set up, we're going to obviously scrim the loser of the other semifinals. We haven't run into too many issues because 
that we've been happily just screaming G2 all the way because, you know, I think they will come out with guns blazing and we came out with guns blazing. We're not really hiding anything for finals because these are very intense best of five. S best of five. So, so from our perspective, you know, uh, coming into the next week, hopefully we will get scrims against H2K and the loser. And I think uh, I don't, it's not something that I'm too worried about, about hiding things, because I do believe uh, everyone in EU is very, very honest and not uh, revealing things. <laughs> okay, so um, now I'm, I'm going to give you this opportunity to maybe, I mean, probably address the haters. Some people like to address their fans. So, <laughs> so if there's anybody you want to address out there that you want to prove wrong or something in that regard, now is your chance. Like, I, I could comment on the thing that Proly said. I think the way he structured it and saying that his players failed with very, very basic things and overthought something, I think that's a way of choking. I think not the only way of choking is to stop talking. I think overdoing things is also a way of choking. So I think the, the, the point still stands, even though I think H2K delivered better than they've ever had in this playoffs. And to give some shout outs, you know, I don't think I want to give shout outs to any haters because, <laughs> you know, it's kind of hard to hate the Splice Boys because, you know, they're so cute, all of them. So I would like to thank all the supporters. I would like to thank you. I would like to thank our organization, Brisby and uh, Hans, for doing everything that they do. And of course, a big thank you to Splice and its sponsors. I would like to thank you for the absolutely amazing interview. And if you guys want to see more of these interviews, just please go on to thescoreesports.com or download our app. See you guys the next time.